July 11, 2004 was not an easy day for 16-year-old Brittany Gregory. Her relationship with boyfriend John Fitzgerald, 18, has been rocky lately. In the evening, Brittany and John had a fierce quarrel on the phone over a trivial matter. She eventually decides to compromise and make up with John. That same night, Brittany left to meet John, but sadly, she never came home. What the hell happened to Brittany? Today, we will talk about the disappearance of Brittany Gregory. Bricktown is a town on the coast of Osney County, New Jersey, United States. It is one of the largest towns in the Jersey Shore ports. Residents often spend weekends at the town's parks and beaches. It's also a major attraction for tourists, with Bricktown ranked as the second safest city in the United States. However, Bricktown is also where Brittany disappeared in 2004. Brittany Gregory was born in April 1988 in Brick Township, Osney County, New Jersey. At first, she lived with her parents, Deborah Gregory and Joe Dunn, but the parents decided to separate when Brittany was just a toddler. Brittany has four siblings, she is the youngest. Barbara Joe Dunn was her own older sister, and they were three years apart. In addition to Barbara, there are Brianna, William, and Brian Gregory, who are half-siblings on Brittany's mother's side. By 2004, Brittany was 16 years old. She is a junior at Brick Memorial High School. Brittany dreamed of becoming a forensic scientist. In terms of TV shows, Spears can't put it down for forensic crime shows. In 2004, Spears also maintained a steady relationship with her 18-year-old boyfriend John Fitzgerald. They met at school two years ago, in 2002. Those who knew Brittany well said she was an easygoing girl who, even at 16, seemed much more mature than her peers. As the youngest in her family, she was loved and adored by her family, friends, community and boyfriend John. On July 11, Brittany has been having a rough day lately. She and her boyfriend have been arguing a lot lately. Because two days ago Brittany found out that John has been hanging out with another girl lately. Brittany, who has been dating John for nearly two years, is upset by John's estrangement. Head full of bad thoughts. On July 10, Spears went to the hospital to visit her brother Brian's girlfriend, who had just given birth. She came home to sleep around 2 a.m. Around noon, Brittany's 19-year-old half-sister Brianna noticed that Spears was in a bad mood. To get her to stop thinking about John, Brianna asked Brittany if she wanted to see their big brother William, who was in a prison awaiting trial. But Brittany didn't want to go. Brittany wants to stay home and sleep and figure out what's wrong with John. Finally, she called John. John told her that he planned to go to Peak Beach. Brittany wanted to go too. So she asked John if he could drop by and pick her up. John refuses, and Brittany hangs up in frustration. That same night, Brianna went to babysit at her brother Brian's house, while Brittany went to her father Dunn's. At about 6.30 p.m. M., Brianna called Brittany to ask how she was doing. Brittany said she would be back in a few hours on Sunday night. But she never came home again. On July 12, 2004, Brittany's father, Dunn, searched everywhere but couldn't find Brittany. Anne was worried. He called Brianna and asked her if Brittany was with her or knew where she might be. This also worried Brianna, who immediately went to John's house and asked him if he had seen Brittany last night. John told her that Brittany never came to him. On the afternoon of Monday, July 12, 2004, Brianna went to the local police station in Bricktown to report Brittany's disappearance. Mark Byrne Police and Elliot Morgan Police took over the case at 4 p.m. Police arrived at Dunn's house because that was the last place Brittany was seen before leaving. They first questioned Brittany's family and neighbors, but no one remembered seeing her the night before. After detailed questioning, police ruled out the possibility that anyone close to Brittany was involved in her disappearance. They searched Brittany's house and found her mobile phone, makeup and diary. To the police, Brittany's disappearance increasingly looked like a kidnapping case. 
Brianna told investigators that Brittany and John had a troubled relationship. When they heard that John had recently had a fight with Brittany, they called him to the police station for questioning. John is a soft-spoken man. He told the officers he loved Brittany and was shocked to hear of her disappearance. John told police he last saw Brittany on July 10, 2004. Because of their relationship troubles, Brittany sent him a letter to calm down the quarrel. She apologizes for her actions and even suggests that they could at least be friends. The last time John spoke to Brittany was during a phone argument on July 11, 2004, when Brittany hung up in frustration. But with no evidence against John, police were unable to press charges. Police asked John to take a polygraph test, which he passed. Although John was ruled out as a potential suspect, he wasn't completely ruled out. Police hope to question Brittany's friends next. She has a very tight circle of friends who know her and her family very well. They told police that Brittany's family had a history of drug use and that strangers frequented the home. The police found the information suspicious and went back to Brittany's family to learn more. Through a review of Brittany's diaries and harsh interrogations of the family, the police revealed many of the family's secrets. In 1989, when Brittany was just eight months old. She was sent to live with her great-grandmother Beatrice Wood. She temporarily cared for Brittany and her older sister, Barbara Jo, until their mother turned her life around. Brittany's parents, Deborah Gregory and Dern, never actually married. Deborah had a drug problem for years, so she separated from Brittany and Barbara Jo's father and gave custody of them to Beatrice. In addition to Brittany and Barbara Jo, Deborah had three other children by another man who died in a car accident. Family court records show that custody of Brittany and Barbara Joe changed three times in the 1990s before the girls were finally handed over to Dunn on December 3, 1997. Dunn had his own problems. He served a five-month sentence in 1991 for burglary and drug possession. Arrested again for cocaine possession on November 15, 2000, and given a suspended sentence. Dunn also has a long history of drug use. He has made many suspicious friends and suspicious. People often come and go in and out of the house. Police asked if any of these suspicious figures had visited Dunn's home on the day Brittany disappeared. Brittany's older sister, Barbara Jo, told police a name. That is her ex-boyfriend Tony. Barbara Jo said that Tony was too friendly with Brittany, which became the main reason for their breakup. When the police tracked down Tony and questioned him about his whereabouts the night Brittany disappeared, Tony provided an alibi. Tony has not been charged, but he has not been completely ruled out as a suspect. Various clues and clues lead to a dead end. The case stalled for several days. Police work hard to find Brittany, hoping to find the truth behind her disappearance. Brittany's case rocked the New Jersey shore. Some neighbors organized their own search parties, while others wore ribbons that read Find Brittany mid-July 2004. With no ransom demands or traces of other Brittany's. She is now presumed dead. Brittany's case finally made some progress. An anonymous informant provided police with information on a man named Jack Fuller. He was a known drug addict with a criminal record and a friend of Brittany's father, Dunn. The informant said Jack told him he had injured his back while digging a grave to bury a girl he had killed. After hearing the news of Brittany's disappearance, the informant decided to come forward. They learn that Brittany met Jack through Jack's daughter, Cassandra. Cassandra Fuller dated Brittany's brother William, but their relationship soured after William went to jail. After the online confession, the police are now on the trail of Jack. They plan to get his confession on tape. On Friday, July 16, 2004, the informant arranged to meet Jack at a convenience store. The officers had the informant wear bugs while the officers waited nearby. But sadly, Jack didn't reveal anything about Brittany, but he did say that he wanted to kill another man, a man named Tommy. Jack mentions that Tommy was there when Brittany was looking for a car to go to John's house. 
he was the last person to see Britney alive. The Tommy Jack is referring to is his childhood friend Tommy Language, he's another career criminal. Jack actually has plans to go to Tommy's house. After meeting with the informant, the police managed to reach Tommy's residence before Jack and set up a watch there. Officers found Jack's abandoned vehicle near Tommy's house shortly after, but Jack showed up minutes later with a petrol can. Jack was arrested on suspicion of murdering Brittany and taken to the police station for interrogation. Tommy Lang was also brought in for questioning. At first, Tommy is reluctant to reveal anything about Jack, but when the police broadcast Jack's conversation with the informant, it is revealed to him that Jack plans to kill him. After hearing Jack's conversation, Tommy tells the police everything he knows. He said they were driving together on July 11, 2004 and later decided to go to Dunn's house, and as they were leaving a few minutes later, Jack told Tommy he was going to take him home. But before they could leave, Brittany also got into Jack's car and asked them to drive her to her boyfriend John's house. Moments later, Jack sends Tommy home and then goes with Brittany to drop her off at her boyfriend's house. Tommy claims Jack may have killed the girl at that point. When faced with these messages, Jack said he didn't know what they were talking about. He vehemently denied having anything to do with Brittany's disappearance and demanded that a lawyer be present. As the police tried to get Jack to confess, another witness came forward. A woman also named Brittany called the police. Let's call her Brittany too, and she told the police that Jack had been in the kidnapped her. She claims to know where Jack might have taken Brittany. Number two is a drug addict, and Jack has promised to provide her with drugs, but she doesn't know it's all a trap. The woman said Jack had placed her under house arrest for several months, but she managed to escape. The woman told officers there was a place in the Greenville section of Lakewood, New Jersey, where Jack liked to go to get his drugs. That place is less than two miles from Jack's home. On July 27, 2004, nearly two weeks after Brittany disappeared, police sent a search party to the location described by the woman. The area was searched last week by officers, helicopters and dogs, but nothing was found. The woman's lead is the police's last hope for solving the Brittany case. If everything the woman claims turns out to be false, they will be back at square one. They brought search dogs. When a searcher spotted an outstretched arm in the woods, he immediately alerted the rest of the team. Hundreds of law enforcement officers searched multiple locations. At around 9 a.m., they found Brittany's naked body. After further investigation confirmed Jack's connection to Brittany's murder, officers found Jack's car, a town Chevrolet Cavalier, which an officer had seen near the crime scene. When police approached Jack to ask what he was doing, he told them his dog was lost and he was looking for it. The police let Jack go without further questioning. Jack's car was sent for a more detailed inspection and blood was found inside the car. When those blood samples were tested against Brittany, the results showed a match. This evidence, combined with witnesses and Jack's voice recordings on tape, was enough to arrest Jack. In 2004, Jack Fuller was charged with first-degree murder and held in the Ocean County Jail on one million dollar bond. Even so, he maintained his innocence and more than a year later, on October 18, 2005, Jack confessed to Brittany's murder. He told his story and on the night of July 11, 2004, Jack claimed he slapped Brittany in the face and head at least twice because she tried to stop him from taking drugs when he dropped her off at her boyfriend's house. After the beating, Brittany started cooing, with blood dripping from her nose and mouth. Jack continued to use drugs. When he started noticing Brittany, she had stopped breathing. On Friday, January 13, 2000, Jack, then 64, walked into court to receive his sentence. He remained expressionless throughout the hearing. The judge sentenced Jack to life in prison without the possibility of parole, Brittany's death is remembered as the victim of a crime. It is hoped that this case will arouse the society's attention and reflection on similar cases, 
make further efforts to protect innocent lives and strive for justice and security for those who have suffered violence and injustice.